a really good dynamics problem for us to talk about today. I want to talk about terminal velocity. Now we hear about terminal velocity all the time. It's a phrase that gets thrown around. It sounds like it might be the name of a band or the name of a movie or something, but it has a really specific meaning. Terminal velocity is the maximum speed an object will attain under and free fall through the air. So let's say I have something like my tennis ball here. Okay, I have tennis ball. If I drop it off a really tall building or a bridge or something, it'll accelerate under the pull of gravity, but that the rate of acceleration will change because aerodynamic drag builds up. Eventually you get to the point where the force due to the air rushing past it, the aerodynamic drag, equals the weight of the ball and it quits accelerating. It's reached a steady state. That's terminal velocity. So I want to do a quick example here. Let's say I've got a ping pong ball. I'm using a ping pong ball because it's really light and terminal velocity is low. Okay. Let's say I've got a ping pong ball, and let's look at the forces acting on it. Well, this is the weight, all right, and that equals mg, and then there's aerodynamic force. Well, how do you, exp how do you uh, describe aerodynamic force? It turns out it's pretty simple. The aerodynamic force is some constant times v squared, the square of the velocity, and that constant is written out this way, cd one-half rho s. Okay, where CD is the drag coefficient. Drag coefficient is something you look up and it's dependent on the shape. For a ping pong ball, the drag coefficient is about 0 0.45 and it's unitless too. Okay, sometimes you see drag coefficient uh, for cars. Everybody wants to tell you how uh, low drag their car is and so they've got drag coefficients. Sometimes you'll see those in car ads. Okay, well there's one half, that's just a number. Rho is the density of air. Now we're working in metric units here. The density of air is approximately 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. Now it depends on where you are, what altitude, and a lot of other things. At standard day at sea level, it's 1.23. Well, I'm a little above sea level right now, so 1.25 sounds good. And S is the area, cross-sectional area, of the ball. Well, this ball is 40 millimeters in diameter. Okay, so it's going to be pi over 4 times 0 0.04 meters squared. That's also um, pi r squared. I'm using work, uh, working in terms of diameter just because it's easier. And let's see, if I do this right, my area is 1.257 times 10 to the minus third square meters. Okay. That's a really small number. Well, it's a really small number because a meter is about this long. Okay, so that's that's okay. And if we work all these numbers out, C turns out to be uh, let's see, 3.393 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms per meter. Now that's a really oddball unit. Okay, but remember we're going to multiply this times velocity squared and we're going to get a force. Okay, so let's talk about, just in, in, in words here, let's talk about what's going to happen. Alright, let's call this time on this axis and the vertical axis will make that acceleration. All right. Now, when the ball is first released, okay, the acceleration is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay. What's going to happen is it's eventually going to go down until the acceleration is zero. Or if we want to, uh, so we're going to get to the point zero acceleration. When I get to zero acceleration, that's terminal velocity. I'll call that V sub t. Now another way to look at this is let's look at the velocity rather than the acceleration. Okay, same kind of thing here. time, and this is velocity, all right? That's what terminal velocity looks like. You start with acceleration increasing linearly because aerodyn you're going so slow, aerodynamics doesn't matter, and you get to the point where it go the velocity goes horizontal, okay? No more acceleration. The slope of this curve is zero. When the rate of change of velocity equals zero, there's no acceleration. And so in that, that plot, that would be the terminal velocity. To me, this one makes a little more sense. I can kind of see that one. Either of the two plots I've just drawn is okay. So if I'm going to 
figure out what terminal velocity is here, I'm really going to try to figure out a value for v. So here's how we're going to do this. When, and it doesn't really matter which, uh, posit which whether I call positive up or positive down, let's call positive up, and I'll call that, uh, we'll just leave that as the positive up direction. Okay, when I'm at terminal velocity, there's no acceleration, right? So these two forces have to equal one another. So I'm going to say CV squared minus MG equals zero. So at VT, remember acceleration equals zero now, all right? That's true. Well, let's see, it means CV squared equals MG, and that means that V equals the square root of mg over c. And if I plug all these numbers in, I get this really low number. I get, uh, let's see if I do this right, 8.5 meters per second. And that's assuming that the mass of the ball is 2.5 grams. Okay, I gotta make sure and give you that. Well, what if I uh, put some extra weight in that ball? Maybe I put some little pieces of metal or plastic or something in there to make that make the ball weigh more, but I don't change its geometry any. So I don't change anything over here. I don't change the area. I don't change its drag coefficient or anything. Maybe use a little needle and inject some plastic or something in there to make it heavier. Well, all I've got to do is change that number right there. And it, the terminal velocity changes with the square root of mass. So let's change this change that. What if that's 100 grams? Okay, and I'm going to cut, by the way, gm is gram rather than g because we're starting to, uh, since we're working with accelerations, I want to distinguish grams from g, the acceleration of gravity. Okay, well if I do that, the number works out to be 53.77 meters per second. All right, so there you go. That's how to figure out terminal velocity. All you need to know is density of air, mass of your object, and its drag coefficient. From there, you can figure that out. That's terminal velocity. Talk to you later. Hope this helps.